Today for just over $10 we're going to build a USB stick that we can plug into a computer and run terminal commands. Warn you guys, this is going to be good. Rubber Ducky is what you would call a bad USB. Basically, it's a USB stick you can plug into a computer to run terminal commands and pretty much anything you can do with a keyboard. The Rubber Ducky costs $45, but today we're going to be doing the same thing for just over $10. Down in the description, you can click a link to a video by Satonic. It's a really great YouTube channel if you're into hacking and coding and stuff like that. Um, and he created a $3 bad USB stick. I am building pretty much the same thing, only it's $10 because I wanted it here within a week instead of within three months, which is the links that he gave us. You can do it for just over $10, but if you don't really care how long it takes to get here, you can do the same thing for about three or $4. I'm gonna be showing you how to do it on a Mac because I use a Mac for my main computer. If you'd like to know how to do the same thing on Windows, you can go watch Satonic's video about how to do that. I'm just gonna show you how to do it on a Mac. First off, to build this, you're going to need an Arduino Pro Micro. Um, it is a really cheap, Arduino board that does a lot of really cool things, but today we're going to be using it to program a bad USB. Also, unless you want to do a lot of soldering, you're going to need this little thing called an OTG adapter. Basically, it's a, a micro USB to full size USB adapter. It just makes it a bit easier. If you have an extra USB cord laying around, you could solder that on yourself, but um, this OTG adapter just makes things look a whole lot nicer, and it's only a couple bucks off eBay, so what have you got to lose? Also, if you want to make your life a whole lot easier, you're definitely going to need a little button, just a simple PCB board button. If you're into doing projects like this, most likely you have a dust of these laying around anyway, but if not, you can get it for a couple cents off eBay pretty cheaply. The links to buy all of this stuff will be down in the description, as well as a couple other links that are super useful, so go down there. I mean it. It's really useful. Okay, the first step, if you have the button or a switch will work as well, go ahead and solder that on two pins ground and three on your Andrino Pro Micro. Just so you know on these little buttons, the two pins that are on the same side are the ones that are close and open when the button is pressed or let off, not the ones on opposite sides, if that makes any sense at all. You also definitely want to put a little bit of electrical tape on the side of the OTG connector that doesn't have pins, just to keep your board from frying in case you plug it in backwards. Now let me explain why we have a button on the board. This board's going to be programmed to run code immediately once it's plugged into a computer. That can become a problem when you want to reprogram your board and plug it into your own computer, then all of a sudden all your code is running on your own computer, which would obviously be a bad thing. So with the code we're going to be installing, all you have to do is hold down the button when you plug it in and the script will not run. You'll definitely thank yourself if you put a little dab of hot clue around it just to keep things secure. The last step is to simply plug in your OTG adapter into the board. And that will about do it for the hardware. Now comes the fun part, taking our bad USB and programming it on our Mac. First off, head over to arduino.cc and download the latest version of Arduino Control. Um, it's free, you can get it pretty easily, just install that, because obviously it's an Arduino board, so we need to use the Arduino software to control it. Now, coding with Arduino code is a bit past the scope of this video, so instead we're going to use DuckyScript, which is the same language that the original bad USB rubber ducky runs on. It's pretty simple to learn, and down in the description you can find a list of all the ducky strip commands. They're pretty useful. We'll only be using a few of them, but feel free to dive in here and learn all you can about this because it is a pretty easy script to learn. But of course, Arduino Control can't read ducky script, it only reads Arduino code. So we're going to head over to satonic.com slash ducky. This was built by the same guy who originally came up with the idea to use an Arduino Pro Micro as a bad USB. So first off, we're going to use the command delay and then a number, which is in milliseconds, so 400 milliseconds. That basically delays everything we do 400 milliseconds just to give the computer time to notice that there is a new USB drive connected. After that, um, we're going to, let's say, go ahead and open up terminal. So we're going to use the command GUI, which basically means clicking the command key, but um, that's not going to do us very good. We want to actually hit the space key after that, so command space, that will open up spotlight. Then below that, we're going to add a string command, which basically just type something out, uh, terminal, and then the command enter, which is obviously the enter key. So that will open up Spotlight, and type in terminal, and hit enter to open the terminal app. Below that, we're going to do the string command again to type something into the terminal. We'll do the say terminal command, which comes on Mac, so it's pretty fun to play around with. We'll do um, your computer has been hacked. That'll be all for the script, we'll just pretty much end it there. Um, you can do so much more of this script, but that's just a very simple 
then I'll probably have more videos coming out later on the, what you can do with this skirt. But for now, that's all we need to do. So now we're going to hit the compile button to move all of that into Arduino code. Now go ahead and open up your Arduino app and delete everything in the current sketch and copy everything from the output of the compiler and paste it into the input of the Arduino app. But this code isn't quite ready yet. We still have to add on the bit of code to make it so that when we click the button, the code will not run. So to do that, scroll down until you find the void setup and, and return a couple times to add some more room at the beginning of that command. And what we're going to do is just paste in some code. Make sure it is properly formatted. Um, if you do any code, you should know what that means. Basically, just have a make it make, just make sure basically just make sure it's lined up with the rest of the code and not tab too far in or too far out. You can find this code in the description of the video. So now that our script is done, we need to go up to Tools and select the board Arduino Leonardo because that is the type of board that we are technically using. Next, go ahead and plug in your board. If you plug it in and nothing and nothing lights up on the board, that means you probably plugged it in upside down. So go ahead and flip it around, and plug it in the other way. That this is why it's important to have the tape on it because if you plugged it in upside down, you could fry the board. Now it's plugged in, you can see it lights up. And if we go back up to Tools and Port, we have a new port that says Arduino Leonardo. Make sure you select the Arduino Leonardo port, otherwise this just won't work. Now that that's done, go ahead and hit verify script to make sure we have no errors. Um, nothing should happen. It should just give you a little good information about how much of the program storage it gives you. Now you can go ahead and hit the upload button and it should start uploading. Now as you can see, the script will immediately run. Obviously something has gone wrong here because the script run and something happened that we didn't quite want it to happen. So we obviously need to change a bit in our script. What I'm going to do is go ahead and unplug the board from the computer and exit out of this and let's go check our ducky script to see what went wrong. Okay, so here is the problem. We have the stream terminal and then we immediately hit enter. I think the problem is we're not giving the computer enough time to actually recognize what we've done because believe it or not, this little board can go faster than the Mac graphic user interface. So what we're going to do is add a delay command. Uh, we'll do 400 milliseconds again, hit enter and then do another delay, 400 milliseconds, and then type that in. Hopefully those delays should give us a bit more time. We're going to go ahead and compile. We're going to copy our new and improved code, go over to Arduino, paste it in. And now, of course, we have to add that little button code at the beginning again. Uh, verify to make sure there's no errors, which there aren't. Here's an example where this button comes in play. We're going to hold down the button while plugging it into our computer to keep the script from running. This is kind of, kind of tricky at the angle I'm doing it, but nothing happened. I should be able to let go of the button now. And as you can see, no script ran, meaning that our little button code worked. So now that we have added our extra wait times between commands, which I think is very important, we can go ahead and upload our script. Just click upload, and as soon as you see stuff happen, go ahead and just yank it out of your computer. There you go, I pulled it out. Um, it started at the beginning of the script, but it didn't do all of it now. That's not really required, but if you left it in, the whole script would run, which is obviously not a good thing if you were doing a script that could, you know, potentially hack into someone's computer. But of course, this wouldn't be a Jesuit video if we didn't 3D print something. So here's a case for it. You can download this on Thaniverse, link in the description, and it just slides in here. And you can line everything up just right so that you can plug in the OTG adapter. And there's a little hole in this cap to go over the button, and you can just slide that into the rest of the case. I printed all tight fit. You might have to adjust some things in, depending on the tolerances of your printer, but if your printer prints accurately enough, it should all fit together quite easily. There's an innocent little uh, USB drive that with a 3D print case and a piece of electrical tape and a button on the side. Uh, I guess those tolerances were a little too tight because uh, the top literally ripped off and you can see the infill and I can't get the board out. So, okay, so I removed it just fine um, with a little of prime. So obviously this file needs fixing, so don't worry, the Thanaverse version of this file, feel free to go and download it right now. It should be the correct tolerances and should all work just fine, so don't be scared about that at all. But let's go ahead and see if this little gadget works. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug it in, being careful not to hold the button when plugging it in, obviously, and, oh. Your computer has been hacked. 
Ha ha! Sweet gibbery, it worked! Well, I definitely call this little project a success, James Board works quite well. But don't think me, definitely go over to Satanic and subscribe to him. He has some great other videos. Like I said in the description, is the original tutorial for how to do this on a Windows computer. I will definitely be having some more videos coming out soon about what you can do with this little board. I'll probably go over on how to create a reverse shell and probably a couple other fun little humorous projects. But I would definitely recommend learning all you can about DocuScript and Arduino code. It is definitely becoming a very useful tool in this day and age. And it's definitely a good prank to play on your friends. I'm Sai. Thanks for watching. Whoa.